How's it going, everyone? Welcome to this Tuesday episode of SpaceX in the News. Happy to have you here today. I hope your work week is going swell. Mine is. Thanks for asking. Today, we're going to pick things up with where we left off on Friday's episode because a lot of SpaceX news happened to drop after we published our video on Friday, so we're going to get right to it. Starting with some drone footage that SpaceX released that afternoon of the destacking of Starship 20 off of Booster 4. Or they did this just for the presentation, but now that the presentation's over, they destack so they can get back to testing these vehicles which they did do with both the ship and the booster throughout last week. Um, we left off with Booster 4's cryo test, video provided by Lab Padre, who, by the way, his channel now does these daily Starship updates uh, most days. So you, if you really want that nitty gritty detail with all the videos provided, be sure to subscribe to his channel. There's a link in the description. Yeah, it's great. Even for me, it's great because now I don't have to like be around my computer all day, every day to make sure I don't miss anything on his live streams. But anyway, back to the 18th, later that afternoon, SpaceX once again began testing the orbital launch tower in its rocket catching and stacking chopstick arms, moving them up the tower and moving them back and forth just to make sure it's got the proper range of motion, I guess. Also, Labs cams managed to capture some Booster 8 action in the high bay of Highway 4 at the construction yard. We've noted in previous videos that Booster 7 is almost completed with its stacking. And if you're wondering, you know, what happened to Booster 6, don't worry, local photographer Starship Gazer has your 6. It's been chopped up with stringers added to some parts for testing purposes. You can also find Starship Gazer's link in the description below. Make sure you show him some love as well for his efforts. Now, what's really interesting that happened over the weekend is what they've done with SN22. Last week, we covered how they stacked the nose cone on top of the body, but over the weekend, they brought it out of the high bay, strapped some aft fins to it, and oddly enough, shipped it to the rocket garden where starships go to die. You can see it right there in the middle, sitting between SN15 and 16. That's Booster 5 on the left-hand side there. Booster 5 and SN16 never got its day to fly. And it looks like that may be the fate for SN22. The good news is at least one of them is not just going to sit around there and collect dust. Or starbase dirt. A couple locals were asking Elon on Twitter if there was a way that SpaceX could maybe donate one of their starships they're not using from their rocket garden to the community. So Elon recommended maybe the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport. And the airport responded, we're ready for it and have a great location to display it at. Starship Road, where do we sign? And then I guess Elon's going to ship one over, so good for them. I never even got a chance to bid. Can you imagine if the lawyer wife came home from work one day and saw a big-ass starship in my backyard? That'd be freaking sweet. Also, some big star-based news of the week is that SpaceX began stacking the fifth level of the wide bay. So it's now taller than the high bay that sits next to it. Of course, they're building it because they want the ability to stack two Starship vehicles at the same time right there next to each other. It'd be three total if you include the high bay. So this is probably the last normal size section of the wide bay that needs to be completed. They might do an additional partial level six like they did with the high bay next to it where they added, you know, a meeting room and a bar and all that good stuff. And if you tune into Lab Padre Live right now, you'll see that Highway 4 is closed and SpaceX is doing some sort of testing down there at the launch site. In other SpaceX news, the crew of Polaris Dawn were at Hawthorne headquarters last week to see the progress on the new EVA spacesuits, which they will need to use during their mission spacewalk that's supposed to happen in the fourth quarter of this year. The spacesuits you've seen NASA and SpaceX's astronauts wear up until now while they go on Crew Dragon missions is the IVA flight suits. Basically, the difference between those and the EVA spacesuits is the IVA is basically only good for loss of cabin pressure. The EVA spacesuits are a little bit bulkier and they protect you from the extreme environment, the different fluctuating temperatures from hot to cold in the vacuum of space. And the difference between these SpaceX EVA suits and NASA's big bulky spacesuits that their astronauts use to, you know, do spacewalks and repair the space station is that those NASA spacesuits contain their own environmental control system, whereas the crew of Players Dawn, when they do their spacewalk, they'll be tethered to the Crew Dragon capsule and they'll have an umbilical line that feeds them their atmosphere. Also, some news that dropped on Friday from Michael Sheets on CNBC is that SpaceX split their stock for their private investors 10 for 1. You know, SpaceX has become this rare unicorn of a company when it was valued a couple of months ago at over $100 billion. And up until this time, their shares were $560 a pop. But now because of the split, they're $56. Now, SpaceX has never done this before, but Elon's other company, Tesla, has many times. And the reason Elon gave for doing this for Tesla was because, well, when their shares are thousands of dollars each, it's harder for smaller investors to get in on the market. Now, we don't know for certain why SpaceX did this, but again, they are private. The only people that own shares are private investors and their own employees. But when it comes down to it, this split has no real effect on SpaceX as a company anyway. Concerning Starlink news, Elon once again updated us on the progress for his user terminals, not like the ones you and I would buy for our homes, but the ones for commercial aircraft. 
He reiterated that they are right now still testing them in the air using uh, Gulf streams to debug issues, but their deployment priority is commercial airlines. Hopefully that can happen with FAA certification within six months. SpaceX did launch another flock of 46 Starlink satellites yesterday from Slick 40 out of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. I wanna thank those of you who tuned in live with me for this one, we had a good time. We gotta watch this booster fly for a record tying 11th time and land successfully on the drone ship a shortfall Gravitas. And about an hour later, SpaceX confirmed via Twitter that they successfully deployed those satellites so they can make their way to the force shell. We do have another Starlink launch coming this Friday from the West Coast out of Vandenberg Space Force Base, launching at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. We'll be going live for this launch on Rumble, so if you'd like to join us, there's a link in the description below. And now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. On Saturday, Northrop Grumman launched their Cygnus spacecraft on top of an Antares rocket from NASA's Walt Flight Facility in Virginia. Yep. And uh, the Antares launch vehicle from Walt Flight Facility. This is right 100% for us. CRS-17 is cargo delivery to the International Space Station, carrying scientific instruments that study the effects of a drug on breast and prostate cancer cells. Uh, also carries a new combustion facility, equipment to investigate skin aging and microgravity, as well as equipment for the space station's oxygen generation system. And the spacecraft will be used by the ISS to perform a reboost, using its engines to adjust the space station's orbit as a standard service for NASA. The spacecraft docked to the space station on Monday morning and will remain in space until May before it deploys CubeSats and disposes several thousand pounds of trash during its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. But that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you back here on Friday for our next episode, and it's probably gonna be a busy day with the Starlink launch. Until that time, Godspeed.